Oh, hey everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Faith and Fandom Feedback Friday. Friday Feedback. Interchangeable titles. Who knows? I hope you all are doing well. This is uh the feedback for February 23rd as we are kicking in to one of the last February 23rd uh, weekends of this month and heading into spring and all the other shenanigans that are afoot ahead of us uh gonna try and be moderately brief this morning because i have a muggle job and i was actually making notes and trying to be ready um also definitely um didn't watch all of avatar yesterday um so let's start off with that news avatar the last airbender dropped a live action series on netflix now um, there's just been a growing trend lately that I've seen in terms of reviews where stuff is just getting overly negatively panned for what seems like no reason. The box office, TV, a little bit of everything. So I'm going to say this. If you care enough to jump in on Avatar The Last Airbender as it's starting like the live action series if you're you care it's probably because you also care about the animated series this is not going to live up to the animated series so calm your expectations um, i know one piece was a pretty good expectation and one piece uh has so much more content that people aren't as invested and that dave filoni and the other folks that created avatar the last airbender the animated series uh created a masterpiece like tight three seasons beginning to end really good storytelling um you can't expect that from every adaptation you can't expect that in any form now i'll straight straight say this this is 300 million times better than the uh Shyamalan movie so god bless you and your family take that to heart second thing is it's enjoyable it's good if you are a fan of the series, you're going to see a lot of moments that are uh, hinted at, reflected. Some characters' uh, relationships are better than others. Um, some characters' relationships are even improved. I'll say that the Iroh Zuko connection uh, between the two of them have better moments in this um, than they should have had. Like, it's genuinely touching. And I've heard things like leading up to this, like uh, that Sokka was going to be really toned down and that um, Ozai was going to be a supportive father. Shenanigans. Ozai's Ozai. And in fact, we get a lot more Ozai in season one of this than we got in the animated series. Um, not inappropriately, but just, you know, good. I feel like if you can just go in just saying, you know, what, I love the cartoon. Let me watch this. Um, I will say that some of the pacing might be a little, bit, a little bit slow. Some of the performances might be a little bit dry. My one biggest uh, criticism of Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, yeah, dude, just be excited. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's going to be fun. Um, <clears throat> so I like people. Have, I've heard people complain about the visuals. I had no complaints about the visuals. I was rather impressed. Um, some of the the water bending and the fire bending, especially, look the greatest. Um, and you know, obviously, some of the earth bending takes a lot more effort to do. Um, I feel like there's a lot more love and influence shown for the Airbenders, and you get to see the Airbender society at full force at the beginning, which is nice. Um, but yeah. Uh, I will say my one negative is while I think the casting for Iro was pretty perfect in terms of actor appearance, et cetera, there's not anyone else I would have preferred to cast as Iro. Um, Iro didn't Iro for me completely. Like, I don't feel like I felt the warmth of Iro. And I don't feel like I felt inspired by Iroh, which are the two favorite things that I love most about Iroh. Maybe it's because I love Iroh so much that I felt that way. But either way, 
Avatar The Last Airbender is out on Netflix. And I'll say this, do not go into it with negative presuppositions. Um, Tawny says uh, he's one of the weirdos that didn't uh, mind the movie. He loved the martial arts and stuff. Uh, yeah, dude, if you enjoyed the Shyamalan movie, um, I mean, I, my one of my biggest things with, with the Shyamalan movie was the with the was the visuals and the casting choices. So this is going to go well because I mean, dude, Sokka looks like Sokka. Everybody looks like who they're supposed to look like. They nailed that. Um, and Azula is properly crazy um, and evil. Uh, you one nice little thing I'll throw out there is that you know if you have didn't notice that the cabbages dude. The voice actor from the cartoon plays the Cabbages guy in the series. So this guy actually got to reprise his role in live action. And they toy with you with the Cabbages thing for a minute before they give you the proper payoff. And it's wonderful. Uh, also, the gentleman who plays Abed on uh, Community plays uh, the mechanist, Teo's father. Um, nice little touch. Um, just to give you a heads up. Uh, yeah. So the cabbages guy gets his day, bro. The cabbages guy absolutely gets his day. Um, and just to let you know where the series ends. So you're not like hard stopped Rick rolled with it. The series ends at the end of the Northern water temple. Um, with, after they fight the big fight there and turns into the, um, the embodiment of the ocean, etc. You you get that whole thing full stop, and then the season's over. So I enjoyed it. I put my time into it for the whole thing. Zero regrets. Don't take too much negativity to it. So that's the thing. Um, let's look at some other news and stuff so I can actually be honest about what I said about trying to be prompt. Uh, in terms of video games and real sports world, um, EA Sports uh, has signed has put out a thing. If you're unaware, there's been conflict over the years over the idea of college players being in sports games with their likenesses, and they're not allowed to get paid, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's only so much they can get paid, only so much they can receive. Uh, EA has put out a statement saying that each college player that allows them to be put in a game in 2025 will get a whopping $600. And a free copy of the game. Do with that what you will. Like if that's enough to you. If, if you feel. I get that it's technically an improvement. But okay. <laughs> All right. Um, one of the big upsets in the geek world this week. Was the realization of another. Another sad sad life choice of DC Comics. And Warner Brothers as a whole. You know I'm a DC guy, like DC. There's like DC. There's Red Hood up here, like all the things. There's a whole DC shelf, right? I don't know if I can turn my chair that way. There's like those the shelf directly behind me is all DC. I love DC. DC is my jam. Um, but man, it's hard to be a fan of the entertainment that they put out sometimes in terms of visuals and movies and stuff. Uh, there was a developed pitch that was presented to. Warner Brothers to have a Batman Beyond movie, animated movie, made in the style and vibe of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, and the pictures are out there. Uh, it was going to be made by the people that made Spider-Verse in that same style of Batman Beyond. I'm just going to say this. Look up the pictures. It looked stunning. And if you look at the comparison of Miles Morales to Terry McGinnis. Um, it's a story that could tell well. Uh, Tawny, I don't know uh, the Potter news you're discussing. I might have missed that. Um, but I'm just going to say this. Go look for the information on the Batman Beyond uh, concept art literally looks like he could have bumped into miles on the street and i'm very sad that didn't happen uh 
if you're a community fan, which I am a new ish community fan, I have enjoyed it. I feel like that show started off with more potential than almost any other sitcom. And if they had carried their original steam, they could have gone the distance. Um, I've made it to season 5.5. Um, and when I realized Donald Glover was leaving, I got a little sad and didn't really push hard, but as previously stated, a community movie is coming, which tells me they're about to try and like milk the viewership of it as much as possible because community is leaving Netflix globally in April. So if you have a desire to finish community, watch community, do any of that, you've got, you know, a month and a half to get that going. Uh, I only have a season and a half to go, so I'm pretty sure I can knock that out if I can convince my other two daughters to keep watching it because they got sad um, uh, to do that. Um, Tawny mentioned the new HBO Max series, 10 years. It's going to last every 10 years. I've heard about it. Um, I haven't seen any details yet. That's cool. I'm looking forward to seeing how the story of that breaks. Um, if you're a Borderlands fan, Borderlands officially has dropped their first trailer with Kate Blanchett as Lilith. Um, I've tried Borderlands. I enjoy the concept. I got a Borderlands mask when I went to San Diego. Um, so it's something, oh, it's the other side. Um, I, it's something I enjoy the idea of, but I just don't enjoy that type of gameplay as much um but borderlands trailer is coming um it is going to get a little bit of negative backlash with the recent stuff with cat williams and kevin hart um that is affecting a little bit of kevin hart's numbers across the board but i think it's not going to stop anything in terms of other video game movies uh uncharted 2 has been uh not officially announced per se but uh, Mark Wahlberg was told this week to go ahead and start growing his mustache to get ready for the movie. So that being said, the movie is probably on its way um, with that. But Mark Wahlberg was told to start growing his mustache. Um, and real nerd news, not just geek news. Uh, <laughs> and I heard about this from my youth group on Sunday night um, and didn't know that it was like a real, real, real story, but they got really serious about it. There is a mysteriously impregnate, impregnated stingray in North Carolina. It's in a it's in a shop. It's in a tank. There are no male stingrays around, but it does share a sting, uh, tank with a small type of shark. So uh, there's this whole mystery of or what is going to come out of this impregnated stingray. Um, people are excited about it on a genetic level. Um, and there are apparently lines around the block to be able to get in to look at this stingray. Um, this could all be just also really clever marketing for this, you know, shop. But if you if you're interested in um in pseudo immaculately concepted stingrays, um, you should give that a a Google. Barry Cogan of Saltburn recent fame and um, Banshees of Inisherin more or eternals etc cetera, etc cetera, uh has confirmed that he is returning to play the joker as a primary character in the batman sequel um his uh deleted scene uh from the batman was terrifying and gross sounding um and i think he'll do a wonderful job uh jeffrey wright has not uh jeffrey wright knows he's going to be in it but they aren't in full production on when it's moving forward with it. So there is a question of if it will show up for its slated 2025 theatrical release, but also people, Jeffrey Wright's a really popular human and they could be filming his scenes later. Uh, if you are a fan of Jake and Finn and you want to come on, grab your friends, uh, you'll get the opportunity to have a little more adventure time in your life. Because Adventure Time is popping out with some new comic books uh, coming in 2025 um, with original creative voices involved. Uh, if you want to see some more Jake and Vin, you will have that opportunity with in terms of comics. Um, there was also some news in terms of Deathstroke this week. Um, if you're familiar, uh, Joe Mangielli, uh famed D&D &D enthusiast and 
all around kind of gangster uh has loved deathstroke loved getting to play him for the brief bits of time he did in the snyderverse and somewhere in there joe mangieli um wrote a full script for a deathstroke origin story movie and a solo deathstroke movie uh not he loved the character so much that he wrote a script for the movie uh the movie as a concept was abandoned along with the Snyderverse. But um Jim Lee, uh DC artist slash just executive, uh read the script and wanted it turned into a graphic novel. Um and because he liked the story so much. Now that says a lot. When Jim Lee's like, bro, you gotta make this a book, I think you you gotta make it a book. Um <laughs> but Joe Mangieli said that he would only allow it to become a graphic novel if he could be guaranteed that if his story ever got put into film, that he could be Deathstroke. And James Gunn responded to him with that statement of saying he needed to let it go. Um, and he says he's friends with James Gunn, but apparently everybody's friends with James Gunn. <laughs> but you know, that doesn't change their ability to be able to get the projects they want, um, as Zachary Levi has previously pointed out. Um, so uh, there's a cool Deathstroke story floating out there from the guy who played Deathstroke um, that we may never see, but it's whatever. Um, Uncharted 2. And on another cool note, um, if you go to the internet, nets, uh, there was a selfie taken from the Warner Brothers lot with the entire cast of Superman Legacy with Nathan Fillion holding the selfie. Um, so it's really cool to see the group of actors that are assembled for Superman Legacy. Um, you know, knowing that they're going to be like, we're talking about Mr. Terrific. We're talking about uh, Metamorpho. We're talking about Guy Gardner. We're talking about a lot of deep cut DC characters and you even get a nice little headshot of Nicholas Holt with his freshly shaved head as Lex Luthor. So if you want to see the cast of Superman legacy in their full compilation, you can check that out. Just Google it. You'll see it. It's on a lot of the major news sites and um, in wrestling news In wrestling news, uh, what I'm actually kind of sad about, but I guess it has to happen. Uh, Seamus has left is leaving left the WWE for all elite for all elite wrestling. Sheamus has never had like a crazy character arc or major story or anything since I've seen him. I've seen him wrestle in person. I think the dude's a nice gentleman and I enjoy his wrestling abilities. He is a stout boy. Um but I get it. There's only so much um uh only so much shine that you can get there. Um, in a weird, weird n note, uh, uh, Netflix has a uh, movie, I believe, dropping um, about a girl that's turned into a chicken nugget. And it's coming out. Um, somebody heard that and said, my time has come. There's somebody that is the greatest thing that they've ever heard. Um <laughs> But there's a movie, a live action movie, BT Dubs, where a woman is turned into a chicken nugget. That's happening. Um, Shogun premieres on uh, FX this week uh, on the 27th. Uh, if you like Samurais and such, which I like Samurais, uh, you should check that out. Um, Aquaman 2 has done surprisingly well um, in the theaters. Phrases I don't expect to say. Um uh Aquaman 2 has reportedly landed 433 million in the box office. Um now that's not great numbers for a DC film considering how much it costs and marketing and everything. But here's here's the important thing. It made its money back. It was not a absolute failure and surprisingly it did better than any DC uh EU film since 2018. So 
chew on that um, for all it's worth with it. Um, in Jesus news, because I've got one more thing I'm going to come back to in music nerd news um, or a couple things. Uh, in Jesus news, uh, Martin Scorsese, famed director, um, story cinemat cinematic storyteller and critic of the Marvel universe, um, has been making has been working on a Jesus movie. Uh, that's going to be his next big project. Um, you know, he just did uh, Killers of the Flower Moon and everything. Um, and Martin Scorsese's last few movies have done well critically, but poor in box office. His next project is a Jesus movie. Um, it is now delayed. And he quote as the saying, he doesn't know how to tell the story he wants to tell. And here's what I say just kind of in response to that. If you are one of the biggest directors in the world and you want to tell a Jesus story, but you don't know what you're doing, maybe don't do it. Just don't. <laughs> just don't. Um, I know that's not going to stop anything. It's going to happen. But, you know, when he's like, I want to tell a Jesus story, but I don't know how or what. Ah, that makes me nervous. Um, <laughs> secondly, uh, Ordinary Angels, Christian-based uh, film of a true story starring Hilary Swank and Alan Richson of Reacher slash Titan slash Ninja Turtles slash Smallville fame uh, is out in theaters today. So if you need a good emotional uh, tearjerker family film with uh, Christian values, you can check that out. I do plan to watch it. It won't be this weekend. I've got a con and a barn dance that I'm DJing tonight. Uh, so, uh, but it's out in theaters, uh, and I want to support it and go check that out. Um, it doesn't look like a cringy Christian movie. It looks like a sad Christian movie and I'm down for that. Um, and then also in also another Christian ish film, uh, Rob Reiner, the man who brought us the princess bride and a lot of other movies you might not care about as much, but he did bring us the princess bride. Uh, has released a film slash documentary on Christian nationalism, like the the merger of like hard uh, Republican values, America and Jesus, and uh, made a very scathing documentary on the concept. Um, Missy, you're here for the barn dance. Yay. I was like, people aren't going to know what a barn dance. My friend Missy, who's watching this, is running the barn dance. I'm excited to see you. Um, it is going to be fun. And uh, I feel your students have picked out the playlist. I was like, I had all these on songs already on a playlist, so it's I'm down for it. But the man, uh, Rob Reiner, has made a scathing, Christian, or a scathing film about Christian nationalism. I'm not going further into that topic. But just to let you know, it exists. It's called God and Country. And... um. So there's that. And then um, uh, there was also a scene, and you can probably find pictures and video of this on the internet if you care. I didn't really want to dive into it further. But um, a man on a flight this past week uh, willy-nilly decided to mid-flight open the emergency exit door, potentially killing everyone on the flight. Um, and he was tackled. By by what I read, I believe five gentlemen, and they tackled him, stopped him from opening to the door, held him down, and duct taped him to the seat of his plane for the duration of the ride. And then he was promptly handcuffed and taken into custody. One, good job. <laughs> Dudes that tackled the person, good job. Second, always have duct tape. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Always have duct tape. It's important. Um, so there's that. And for my last little bit of news, um, previously last week, um, 21 Pilots, which is one of my favorite bands, uh, did a thing where they went back to all the streaming sites and put red duct tape over their eyes on all the album covers and stuff and all of their promotional art for all of their past albums. If you are aware, 21 Pilots does a cryptic 
low key storyline that passes through all their albums. Um, things about a character named Clancy and Nico and Dima and the evil bishops. And there's this was like long running, intricate, like Dungeons and Dragons level storyline that runs through 21 Pilots lore. I love their music. I've not taken the time to fully invest in that storyline, but I do have a moderate understanding of it, especially in the videos for Trench and all the music videos that followed Trench. Uh, they put out a video basically summarizing the entire storyline so far, which is really helpful because... I'm a big nerd and I love music really passionately. And even with that, I struggled to find all the connection and fluidity of that. Um, that being said, it's they put out a video on all their platforms of you can find on Facebook, Instagram Reels, wherever you want to look. Um, but they put out a video explaining the whole storyline so far. So if you care, which I thought the video was well done but it's equally confusing if you're not on that level um because they said next week the new chapter begins so either a they're dropping a new album next week or b they're announcing the album it's more likely that they're announcing the album um than dropping it either way i'm excited it's been over three years since we had um scaled and icy a full 21 pilots album so we're going to get that opportunity. Who texted me? Um, the new 21 Pilots music is coming as well. So there's new Judah and the Lion, new 21 Pilots. I am rather um, uh, pumped for that um, with it. Uh, oh, dude, Tristan, you, you, you need to... Um, like watch the music videos on like if you get the opportunity you can probably start um at trench and watch all the music videos that have dropped since trench um and see what's happened there with that um but watch i'll say this watch the video they put out on facebook instagram reels all that stuff and uh see what you think of that but like there's a storyline it does kind of make sense and it will also make a lot of the lyrical content that doesn't have direct references to things um make a little bit more sense you can totally enjoy the music without knowing the storyline but it makes a little bit more like oh you're referencing something when you actually listen to it so that being said also kind of big-ish news um my comic book is out. Technically, um, sort of out. It's here. Like every copy of it on the planet is in a box right beside my desk. Um, and I'm taking it with me to a Comic Con this weekend. And then once I'm back from the Comic Con, it's going on my Square site and it will be available. Um, I've ordered more copies of it. Um, I'm just say this I'm really happy with it. I don't expect everybody else to be happy with it, but I'm happy with it. And so if you aren't aware, it's a comic book called Flockward and it's awkward stories of church people. And it's based on true stories. Um, like <laughs> some names have been changed for safety, but not really. Um, but it's based on true stories of me growing up and the church as a teenager um, and some experiences with that. Um, but I think it'll be fun for people that aren't church people too. Um, but my sales pitch for it is if you... Have ever been to a lock-in? You've ever attended a youth group? Do you know any lyrics to Veggie Tales songs? Um, this is for you, and uh, you you might enjoy that. So I'm looking forward to that being out, and I'm gonna go ahead and pop off here, so I can get this loaded and head to my Muggle job. Um, but uh, real quick, I want to thank our Patreon supporters for being uh, as fantastic as you are, and uh message cool um so uh want to thank our patreon supporters for being as amazing as you are and uh real quick that's uh jamie montgomery matthew coleman jonathan herman ron petit tesh norton scott ward alicia glenn uh candace davis jay sheed um 
Jillian, uh, Jason Crutchfield, Mike Perna, Todd Turner, Jonathan Jacobs, Zach Harris, Caleb Grimm, Jeanette Skaggs, Chris Poirier, Jason Bullock, Christina Ray, Sarah Lewis, Patrick Gale, Rebecca Godlove, and Adam Davis. Thank you all for the fantastic way that you've supported Faith and Fandom and helped make it all possible. Um, I'm really excited to actually go back out into the world with a con this weekend. I will be in Charleston, South Carolina um, uh, at Captain's Comics Expo on Saturday and Sunday um, with book nine and the comic and everything else. Really pumped for that. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for letting me be part of your uh, th part of the beginning of your weekend and uh the brunch of your the end of your week so i hope you have a great day thank you for taking time to listen uh for sharing with me and i look forward to seeing you at a con soon bye